This isn't a joke, I swear. So, I spent way too long watching the Metal Fight series of Beyblade, specifically Season 1, Metal Fusion. I also did some math to find the basic abilities of a Hitmontop. First off, each matchup gets three fights, being one with Beyblade rules, one where Hitmontop gets a held item, and a final destination items off style match, where stamina and move PP is not factored. Let's go over Hitmontop. As for moves, it is allowed any set of moves for each battle, but of course, it's limited to four. The average power of a move in Pokemon is around 80, so moves close to that are going to be considered an average attack, including their effects. Anything below that is likely a speed-based attack, anything above can be considered a special move. It will most likely have Swift, Brick Break, Double Edge, and Rock Slide. Now, let's look at the attack stat. In the anime, a duot that was likely of above average caliber broke 11 roof tiles, a popular sport in Japan. These are likely made of ceramic, and ceramic tiles are said to require 125 pounds of force to break, being 556 newtons. In an example gotten from Sea Dog VA's video, he broke 14 tiles, meaning he is stronger than a duot. Duot's base attack is 75, but Oshawott, with a lower base stat, broke just as many. This is why I took the base 75 and a highballed measurement to account for that, and average them to guess how many attack points translate into strength. My rough math shows it to be 9.73 attack per 125 pounds of force. Now, after running the numbers, a level 100 Hitmontop should be able to put out 18,000 newtons of force, which is more than three times higher than a professional boxer's punch. I'm backing that up by comparing the fact that Kaho, from Sea Dog VA's video, broke five tiles and should be much stronger than that of a Dreepy. Dreepies are supposed to be weaker than a human child, the Pokedex says, and have a 60 for their base attack stat. Converting the Force Kaho, from Sea Dog VA's video, put out, it would be worth around 64 attack points. This checks out. Also, there's the speed of Hitmontop's attacks. In the anime, I saw that a kick was around 4 km per hour, or 2.5 miles per hour. Hitmontop should be able to kick 10 times faster than that while spinning, and an additional 3.4 times faster than that at level 100. Lastly, Hitmontop's ability, where the most useful one, is Intimidate. This limits an opponent to 75% of their normal strength, but this is only for physical attacks. Now, let's bring out the opponents. I'll be doing the fights in order from what I found to be the weakest Beyblade in this scenario, to the strongest. We will act as if the Bladers are the ones using the Beyblades, but only count the Beyblades' abilities. First is Rock Scorpio, an above average Beyblade with a spiked performance tip capable of providing grip. Outside of cheating, there isn't much else to say about it. Now, a Beyblade only weighs 22 grams, so without a significant amount of power, they're easily beaten. In a stadium, Scorpio's best bet is to run away, but it realistically can't win the fight and is quite possibly slower than Hitmontop. Hitmontop would knock it out of the park. In a battle where Hitmontop has an item, it would be the same, no matter what item it had. The same goes for the final fight. Next, let's look at Mad Gasher. Mad Gasher is actually strong enough to shear off parts of defeated Beyblades, including the Metal Fusion Wheel. It also had shown the ability to raise its performance tip mid-battle, not really having much of an advantage. In a stadium match, I doubt that Mad Gasher could get a stadium out, and Hitmontop could easily beat it. No held item is needed, and the final match would be the same result. Next is Dark Gasher. Or I'll be honest with you, it's not much different than Mad Gasher. Wind goes to Hitmontop. The next Beyblade is actually quite similar to the last, because most of its abilities only work on Beyblades, that being Poison Serpent. If Poison Serpent had its spin track in defensive position, I think it could do well to protect against Hitmontop's attacks, but not against Rock Slide, and would lose the match. The same goes for its second and final matchups. The next one is interesting though, as we welcome Storm Aquario into the ring. 
Storm Aquario has some power feats, having crushed several pillars, most likely made of mortar, being 13.5 centimeters thick, or 5 and a third inches. Not only that, Aquario has illusions it can create, and can also move in bursts of speed due to his performance tip, but naturally doesn't move that fast. Last but not least, it can also turn invisible. Now, I think Aquario can give Hitmontop a run for its money in a stadium. While the illusions are similar to Double Team, and Hitmontop can use Swift, it needs something else to deal with the invisibility. If Hitmontop doesn't use a move like Twister, Aquario might be able to get a knockout if it catches Hitmontop off guard. However, if Hitmontop ever was using a move like Twister, or kept its guard up with Rapid Spin, Aquario could never knock it out. Win goes to Hitmontop. Now, with a held item, I think Hitmontop would take a Rocky Helmet to ensure its odds, because it has a defense that's about as sturdy as its offense. So, even if it didn't defend against the invisibility, it could win long term. Lastly, in the final match, Hitmontop should be able to use Twister to win. Next up is Storm Capricorn. Capricorn's actually a huge step up in attack power, being able to consistently crush an arena it jumps around in. Capricorn also has the ability to shoot itself quickly in a direction, like a sniper's bullet. Now, in the stadium, I believe that if Capricorn were under the effects of Intimidate, it would still be able to jump around, but not create craters in the stadium. If Hitmontop used Swift or had Counter, however, it could stop Capricorn's jumping around, and Capricorn hasn't shown high durability, so Hitmontop wins. With an item, Hitmontop would take leftovers so it can keep using Counter on Capricorn, and it would win. In the final match, Hitmontop could use the same strategy as in the stadium. Now here we have Evil Gemios, a dangerous opponent for Hitmontop. Gemios has the ability to shoot blasts of fire and ice, which seemed to be something it could actually do, and wasn't just for visuals. In a stadium match, it can attack from far away, taking advantage of the fact that it's both great at counter-attacking, and Hitmontop can't deal much damage with ranged attacks. Earthquake wouldn't work, as a spinning top wouldn't be affected by the ground shaking that much. And I'll say that Dig won't work because digging under the stadium won't be allowed. Given that these Beyblades are all made of metal, Sandstorm and Toxic couldn't deal damage. However, Stone Edge also attacks from below and doesn't involve the target going under the stadium. If Hitmontop had a held item, it would be best if it used a King's Rock with Triple Kick so that Gemios couldn't counter it. In the final match, I think that Hitmontop could win, because it would now be able to use Dig, and Gemios couldn't protect against an attack like that. Next up is Ares, a really powerful bay. Ares has shown the ability to cut trees and crush boulders, and has excellent defense to boot. I think that Hitmontop would be in trouble after only a few attacks from Ares. In a stadium match, Hitmontop's best chance is High Jump Kick, as Ares is weak to attacks from above, but the move has a drawback. If Hitmontop misses, it'll take significant damage or fly out of the stadium. But Hitmontop has Mind Reader to let it never miss the next attack, so it wins. With a held item, Hitmontop should easily win, by using a wide lens to maximize accuracy. In the final match, I think that Dig would come in handy once again, as Ares' defense relies on attacks from the side, so Hitmontop wins that. Next is Thermal Pisces. Thermal Pisces has many abilities, but its best are the ability to float and manipulate the mind. In a stadium, Pisces' floating ability wouldn't be of any help, but being able to cause Hitmontop to be confused and possibly attacking it mentally could work very well. Hitmontop does however have a move called Vacuum Wave, and vacuums have proven to be a weakness of Pisces. But Vacuum Wave is also a very low power move, and a special attack at that, meaning it would do minimal damage. I believe that if Thermal Pisces would activate its ability first, it would be able to get a stadium out on Hitmontop. With a held item, the most appropriate thing is a Lumberry, which can cure the holder's confusion. Very straightforward, Hitmontop gets the win. In the final match, I believe Hitmontop would win, on the grounds of Pisces not really having any attacks that are powerful enough to win without stadium outs being an option. Upcoming, we have Earth Virgo. Virgo has supreme defense on its sides, and can redirect powerful attacks coming from above. Now, in a stadium, with the use of Mind Reader, 
I think that Stone Edge would be able to easily put out enough power to defeat Virgo. With a held item, him on top can assure its victory by using leftovers, being able to take more hits so it can get out Mind Reader and Stone Edge. For the final match, it's nothing different. Him on top wins. Next is Flame Sagittario, a strong, but not amazingly strong Bay. I'll be blunt, with the introduction of Mind Reader, Outlasting Hitmontop is extremely hard, as Stone Edge is more than powerful enough for many Beyblades to withstand. A Bay either needs to beat Hitmontop fast enough, or withstand that type of attack. Sagittario loses this. Here's an exciting one though, being Cyber Pegasus, one of the most powerful Bays in terms of raw power. While self-destructive, Cyber was able to destroy two large logs while going up a waterfall and flew up into the sky in an instant. This raw power could easily get a stadium out on Hitmontop, but also take Cyber out. I don't think that Cyber could do much damage without using this move, so it's ultimately a tie. Let's bring up the fact that Hitmontop's average attacks at level 100 are about as strong as three professional boxers. A group of professional boxers wouldn't be able to break the logs that Cyber could in such a short instance. Him on top could only take around 3 of its average attacks, and I believe Cyber could deal the damage needed to knock it out. However, with an item, specifically a Focus Sash, Cyber would either have to not use the move or would be knocked out with him on top still standing. Lastly, in the final match, it would yet again be a tie due to Cyber's self-destructive attack. Next is Earth Eagle, a defensive type that's usually suited to fight against opponents from below it. Eagle has the ability to jump, attack from above, and also counter most types of attacks, even supersonic ones. Now, I doubt Stone Edge could even reach Eagle when it's in the air, and like flying types, ground type moves like Dig couldn't hit it at all. Himontop's best moveset for this would be Swift, Focus Blast, Counter, and Mach Punch. Mach Punch was chosen because Hitmontop would need the speed to hit Eagle in the moments it's closest to the ground, the ranged moves are when it's highest, and of course counter to deal with its onslaught. However, I don't think that Hitmontop could win because Eagle's defense has shown to be outstanding, so I think eventually it would beat Hitmontop. With an item however, if Hitmontop had leftovers, a battle of attrition is much more in its favor, so it would probably win. In the final match, I'd say that it's the same as the first but with an even more clear win for Eagle, since stamina is no longer taken into account. Next up is Burn Fireblaze, a Beyblade that has a metal performance tip and can melt steel. Burn Fireblaze not only has incredible heat, but control and power as well, so I think that in a stadium match, it can outmaneuver Hitmontop, as well as exchange equal blows, so win goes to Fireblaze. With an item, I think it's a strange choice, but the best, being a choice band, using the move Facade. If Fireblaze were to burn it, then Facade would become a vicious attack, and it needs no other attack if it has that, so boosting its damage with a choice band is best. If Fireblaze doesn't burn it, then it's losing out on a lot of its power. In the final match, I think that Hitmontop would actually win again, because in an open area without stadium outs, Fireblaze can't just outmaneuver Hitmontop, and Hitmontop can have Facade and Vacuum Wave. Next up is Dark Bull, a bay that specializes in power. Even since the beginning of the show, Bull has had the strength to punch holes in concrete and tear up the ground beneath it. In a stadium match, I do however think that Bull's defense isn't good enough to withstand an attack like Stone Edge or Rock Slide in a stadium, so win for Hitmontop. With an item, I'd say that Lax Incense is the best, because Bull will usually charge straight ahead and isn't incredibly fast either, so easier dodging would help. I'd give that win to Hitmontop. In the final match, I'd say that Bull gets the win, because without superior dodging abilities, the attacks would be too strong to keep facing, and Bull has shown to dig into the ground, so I have doubts about Stone Edge working outside of an arena, as well as Dig. Next up, we have Dark Wolf, a balance-type Beyblade that's shown attack strong enough to drag Fireblaze through walls. If Wolf's defense and stamina are equal to its attack, I think that Hitmontop wouldn't stand a chance inside of an arena. Even if it took a hit from below with Stone Edge, Wolf has shown being able to deal with air movement. With an item, the best moveset would be High Jump Kick 
Mind Reader, Dig, and Swift, with a Fighting Gem. Him on top has to use Mind Reader to assure that High Jump Kick will land, and needs the Fighting Gem to deal as much damage as possible. If that doesn't finish it, Dig and Swift are the safest options. In the final match, I think that High Jump Kick wouldn't cut it, and I don't think that him on top could compete with Wolf otherwise. Next is Rock Leone, a bay that can control and create winds up to 95 miles per hour, or around 145 kilometers per hour. Right off the bat, I don't think Hitmontop could do anything if it was carried by those winds. It has very few ranged options, and something like Vacuum Wave couldn't contain an attack like King Lion Tearing Blast. With an item, the Iron Ball is the clear way to go. I think that the best way of getting through Leon's defenses, like Lion Gale Force Wall, would be Brick Break, for the trait of being able to break through screens. From there though, I don't think that Hitmontop could do enough damage without a move like Stone Edge, but Leon has been shown using King Lion Fang Blast while upside down. In the final match, Leon easily wins. Next is Flame Libra, a bay with the power to send out supersonic waves. Libra can crush the ground into sand passively, suspend water, and even shoot condensed supersonic waves. In a stadium, Hitmontop wouldn't even be able to spin, as it's said to dig into the ground normally while spinning, so in sand, it would be worse. Not even Pegasus, the fastest Beyblade on this list, could keep dodging the blast of supersonic waves, and I don't think Hitmontop could compete with Libra's abilities normally, so it's a loss. With an item, Heavy Duty Boots would be the best, to gain immunity to the terrain, and move at full speed. Vacuum Wave could easily get through the supersonic waves surrounding Libra, and possibly even block the condensed supersonic waves, but I doubt that the damage would be enough, and Libra could instead attack directly. Another loss for him on top. In the final match, nothing different. Next is Pegasus, which I already said is the fastest here, and strong to boot with the ability to make vacuums itself. Hitmontop's best moveset would be Mach Punch, Protect, Swift, and Stone Edge. With these moves, I believe Hitmontop could defend against normal attacks, as well as Star Blast attack, but not Stormbringer. Pegasus wins. With an item, Hitmontop could take a Focus Sash, and would only need Stone Edge and Counter. When hit into the air, Pegasus would use Star Blast attack, and Hitmontop could use Counter, hitting Pegasus when it's most vulnerable, so Hitmontop would win. In the last match, even with Dig instead of Stone Edge, I think Hitmontop couldn't win, as if it used Dig, Pegasus would likely use Star Blast attack to destroy the ground, so Pegasus wins. Now is the last competitor, Lightning El Drago. El Drago has the ability to absorb power from enemies, and has the strength to take out a whole building site in one attack. Not to mention, it's the Beyblade used to part the Red Sea. Even taking into account the fact that Intimidate would limit El Drago's power, I can't imagine Hitmontop taking a hit, so win for El Drago. Now, with an item, Hitmontop could try to use Counter and Focus Ash. However, El Drago would grow stronger from attacking Hitmontop, so the question is could it handle its own attack at double power after that? Likely not, because it is an attack type, meaning its defense isn't its greatest quality, so Hitmontop wins. Now, for the final, final match. Eldrago wins, end of video, happy April Fool's Day!